What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. And I'm back. Feels good. And we're going to get straight into it. We're not wasting any time, of course. I got to say thank you for watching. You know, I appreciate you guys. You're liking videos, you're subscribing, you're sharing my videos. Um, let me know when there is a trailer out, there's a video, or there's a topic to talk about. You know, I appreciate you guys on Twitter, on Discord, everywhere, man. The comment section, I appreciate you guys, man. It means a lot and it keeps giving me the motivation to keep pushing forward and keep doing this thing. So, thank you, Warriors. Appreciate you. And without further ado, we're going to get straight into it. You like that, yeah? I know, I like it too. I like it too. We are going to get straight into this thing. And we're about to talk about the Batman. What a movie. This movie was the easiest spoiler free review. As we do it, beginning of the video, we always do a spoiler free review. And at the um, after the beginning bit, you'll know when it ends. Then we go into a straight, complete review where we talk about everything. Spoilers, concept, ideas, the future, all that type of good stuff. This movie is without doubt. The most Batmanist Batman ever. Incredible movie. Robert Patterson, mate, as I said, that round of applause was for him for such an, a good um, portrayal of Batman. Matt Reeves for incredible direction of the movie. The movie as a whole, the whole cast. Amazing. Amazing. What Matt Reeves said in DC fandom, I think it was in 2020, he was right. He kept his promise. This is the result of a movie that can be created when a director really cares about the work that he's doing. Like, really cares. I'm so happy. I'm so happy, man. Like, he did justice to Batman. The Batman. Would I recommend you go watch this movie? 100%. Absolutely. Um, I would say... I mean, if no, nothing in this world is perfect, yeah? But in terms of this incarnation of Batman, because he is a very different incarnation of Batman. He is so unique, man, that it's, it's surprising how much I like this version of Batman. This was not a super... Like, Ben Affleck, Batman, was a super hyper version of Batman. Because he was dealing with Superman and Darkseid and Wonder Woman and The Flash and all this type of crazy stuff, right? So he had to be an incredible OP version of Batman. I get it, right? Then you got... Christopher Nolan's Batman, which is to what which is a more realistic, more kind of like tactical military version, epic, epic version of Batman. You know, then you have Tim Burton's Batman, which was more crazy and wacky and wild right but it's still amazing for its time this one is more it's not as it's not got the large scale of the other bat um batman movies it's not got the epic nature of the batman movies but it has got all the concepts of an epic movie the concepts of a action uh, Batman movie. I think the one thing that this has is the acting and the 
laser focus it has on Batman, the character, and how he interacts with the world. And the other characters, whether it's Gordon or Carmine or anybody. Did I say Selena? I think I did say Selena. You know, or any character. Um, what's his name again? The the penguin. But is it, they don't use his the penguin's name. They use his proper name in this. I can't remember what it is. Right. Uh, Cobble pot. I think it's something couple pot. But him, right? They showed their the way they navigate Gotham, right? And their reaction and the way they try to change their destiny within Gotham. Because it's like Gotham is a it is very much a living world. Like, you can feel it's not just uh, high-rises and ideas. And you see a lot of people. You see there's a lot of moving parts of Gotham. There's a lot of elements that make the gears of Gotham move and tick, right? And that's what I like about it. It does feel like a lived-in world. But it's also got a very grounded element to it. So when the... Um, the scene is focused on Selena, Catwoman. It is properly on her and about her. When it is focused on um, Gordon, I think he, I think he was Lieutenant Gordon in this. Yeah, I think he was. That that speaks to me for some reason. Yeah. So when it focuses on him, it is about him and how he navigates being a lieutenant in the Gotham Police Department and how he interacts with the corruption that he knows is surrounding him. And that's what I love about the movie. It's all about the characters and how they navigate the rot of Gotham. And some people exploit it. Some people use it to their advantage. Some people just try to stay alive. Some people try to completely nullify it. Some people just submerge themselves in it and just try to survive and do the best they can. You know, you do feel that in the movie, right? It's a god, it's a movie you've got like, man. I definitely would recommend you watch it. Um, as I said, I think I gave it a rating. If I didn't, 10 out of 10. And um, yeah, I think that's the longest. Yeah, that might be the longest spoiler free review I've ever done. Spoiler free review where I didn't actually say any details. Like any. But that's going to change. In a couple seconds. Because we're about to go into my complete review. So if you want to stick around. That's great. If you've watched the movie. If you haven't watched the movie. I would definitely recommend. You tune out now. And come back when you've watched the movie. So, I'm going to start the complete review now. Let's get into it, Warriors. So, now we're about to talk about the film in its entirety. Yeah. I cannot believe Robert Patterson is our Batman. Incredible. I don't know about this guy. I haven't watched any of his movies, man. I mean, I've watched Tenant. But until Tenant, I hadn't watched any of his movies. Well, I have watched Harry Potter. There was a Harry Potter that he was in. I heard he was in Harry Potter. But I didn't know he was in Harry Potter. And then I saw a clip of him in Harry Potter. And then I said, oh, I remember him in Harry Potter. He was the guy that died. But I couldn't make the connection between him and that character. But yeah, it's it's got to be him. It has to be him. Okay, fine. So I've seen him in Harry Potter. And I watched Twilight. 
I was dating somebody at the time and she liked it so I watched it because of her but then we split up and I think that was by the Seth third movie so I never watched the third movie right because I'm not gonna watch Twilight what do I want to watch Twilight for right so I've watched Twilight but I was to be honest I was not paying attention to that movie right I saw little bits of it saw that he was in it you know I don't know whichever yeah uh, but I do think I should check out his movies because I've seen Tenant. he was excellent in that movie it was a, that was a godlike film Christopher Nolan film <laughs> the guy that did the other Christian Bell Batman and he is done now this Batman and I approve vastly I cannot believe the acting on this dude There are two Batman in the whole history of Batman. Oh, sorry. One Batman and two Bruce Waynes is what I should have said. Yeah. Batman was born the day his dad and his mum. I think it was Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne. The day they died, that was the day Batman was born. He was born... In sadness, in death, in misery, in anguish, in hatred, in vengeance, in bitterness. And to top it all off, his city is filled with rot. The city that his father loved and was trying to save. That's why I like the acting that... Um, Patterson does with Batman with the eyes when he's in the back because let's be honest man he is Batman in this movie the most Batman is Batman ever he ain't got no time to be the persona of Bruce Wayne because this movie embraces the very idea the very real concept that it's not Batman, that is the alter ego of Bruce Wayne, it's Batman who has got, who has created the um, alter ego of Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is the alter ego, Batman is the guy. Because I said, when he died that day, he became a new person, a new entity. And he has named it the Batman. And the personification of that new being that was born that day is when he's in that bat suit. Because when he's not in the bat suit, he is doing he's he, be busy. He's doing reconnaissance. He's gathering information. He is doing research. That man is busy. He's got a city to save. And there's a lot of rot and filth in the system. That he has to try to purge. And he says in the beginning of the film. I have to try to make a difference. I can't save everybody. But I have to do what I can to try to save this city. So I have to enlist the help of the shadows. Every criminal. They, Whenever they're doing their crime. They will look to the shadows. And they'll have to fear whether I'm there or not. And that will make them hesitate. That will make them want to stop. You know, so he has like a... He, the, the ideology of Batman in this movie is... He has a 100% uptime on Batman. Amazing. There was even a scene in the movie where... You saw him... And he he couldn't even look at the light. Like when it was daytime. Because he's he's pretty much nocturnal. He's awake do he's most awake at night time when as because he's in the bat suit, right? So when you saw him during the day, he was actually wearing glass sunglasses and he couldn't even look at the sun like the daylight because he's just not used to the light, the daytime, right? I thought that was really good, man. Just those little tweaks to his character, just to uh, little bits of acting to relay how nocturnal he is, how much of he has embraced 
the fact that he has to save the city and be have a hundred percent uptime on Batman in the suit. Amazing. And then he has the let's call I don't want to say it's his foe or rival. He has a counterpart, let's say it is that. The Riddler. And the Riddler essentially is another variation of Batman. He was an orphan, just like Batman. The only thing is, he was abandoned by the system. The Riddler never had a billion, billions of dollar trust fund. He never had someone like Alfred. He never had people that looked up to him and respected him and loved him because of who his dad was, who his family was. He never, the Riddler never had any of that. So he is essentially what Bruce Wayne could have been if Bruce Wayne didn't have everything that he had, right? You know, and so even when he says there was a part in the movie, right, where the Riddler had been captured and he got captured on purpose because it was part of his plan, yeah, which was pretty good, yeah. And he actually said to him, you inspired me. I'm here because of you. It is, um, you gave me the very idea what fear and targeted violence can do. And then Batman just didn't want to accept that. But that is the reality. You inspired this guy who was an orphan just like you, lost his family just like you, has got nothing, the rot of the system. He wants to save the city because... Riddler wants to save, he just wanted to save the, the city as well. He, just, he went about it in a different way. Save it. It's a bit like the Black Panther and Killmonger. You can understand where they're both coming from. And I can understand where the Riddler was coming from. Because who was he killing? Corrupt officials. Corrupt politicians. Corrupt police officers. Corrupt. I don't know. Just he was killing mayors. Or Mayor Alex. Right. He was killing all the corrupt people. That were supposed to serve and protect and help the people. Yet they were in the pocket of Carmine Falcone. Or the Penguin. It's amazing. D8. Even like the D8. District Attorney was under the thumb of Carmine Falcone, um, Carmine Falcone and um, Cobblepot, the, um, the Penguin. Amazing! So I looked at the Riddler and I do understand it was Batman versus the Riddler, but I, I didn't not like the Riddler. I could understand his motivations. I could understand why he was doing what he was doing. I mean, I don't know whether that makes me sound like a bad person, but I wasn't really against him for what he was doing. I wasn't. You know, I could see it. It's just that his... His... Um, what he was doing doing right his the techniques that he employed right it was extreme his methods were very very extreme right and who knows as i said before one wrong turn that man could have become that because at the end of the day what the riddler's doing that's good to him that's good what he's doing and then it makes you think, because I was watching this movie and it made me think, like, I have never thought, and this, this is what the movie actually made me think, I've never watched a movie, well I have watched a movie, but I haven't watched a movie in years, in years, and I'm, when I say years, I mean like almost 20 years, that has made me stop and think, 
pretty much for like an hour straight and that movie was like the longest short movie I've ever watched so the movie is supposed to be three hours did not feel like three hours to be absolutely honest with you right um, but it was three hours and it was long now the reason I say that was because I was moving a lot in my chair right and my back was hurting me a little bit right because I was sitting so still and you know I was kind of like stretching a little bit like that but because the movie was so engaging I never took my eyes off the movie right so my body was feeling it but my mind was so absorbed in what I was saying because everything that the movie was giving me was information it was so the movie itself is fascinating fascinating movie and I was kind of in awe of how smart the Batman is like he was smart that's what I'm just not used to seeing it in the movies where he is this intelligent when they say Batman the world's greatest detective this movie shows he is detective comics DC comics Batman world's greatest detective got it I understand now so yeah man Matt Reeves man as I said I'd give him a round of applause bro like the movie it's a masterpiece it's a masterpiece. I'm not going to say, I'm not saying it's the best movie I've ever watched in my entire life, right? But it is definitely an incredible movie. Very, very well done. The only thing, if I could say like, say like a little bit thing about it, like a little bit of nitpicking, right? It was a very long film, but it did have the greatest in-depth look into characters An example i'll give is like zack snyder's justice league that movie had so many characters a ridiculous amount of characters but every single character got an in-depth arc right to the point where it cut it really did show every single character and you understand their motivations why they are the way they are why they do what they do what their motion motivation is where they're going the way they go about it and why this movie does something like that but it doesn't go too deep in that direction but it's a thriller. One, it's like a ball that has been thrown down a hill, like a snow, like a ball that's been thrown down a uh, a hill covered in snow. And as the ball is going down the hill, it's picking up more and more snow, and the ball is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger right? That's what this movie is. Even though it doesn't go in depth into the characters and the world, it does still go in to detail of the characters and their motivations and how they're navigating Gotham and the rot in Gotham. And you do understand the problems Gotham has got with the corruption of its politicians, the corruption of its police, its corruption of its... Um, DA's apartment, um, D, D, um, DA's department and their mayors and everything like that. And it's to be honest with you, it's kind of, it's like the real world. This movie is not a political movie. It's not trying to make a statement or nothing like that, which I love. Yeah, but it does reflect the world we live in. Yeah, where now that the, the veil of fake has been lifted and we can see politicians they're all frauds they're all liars they're all manipulated they're all controlled by dark money where they're paid by lobbyists so that they can keep certain um things that would benefit us the people give us better lives but it wouldn't make the lives of people that own these corporations 
life not what would in the end like i'll give an example for example like the government they could make it so that the minimum wage is higher but corporations don't want that because they don't want to pay their workforce more money so they'll pay the government money or they'll pay some people in the government money so they vote against making the minimum wage higher. Minimum wage, better for us. Minimum wage, worse off for the company because they're paying their client, their employees more. Right? Corruption. This Gotham does show us the end result if this corruption is not dealt with if it's allowed to fester and set in to an irreplaceable place you know it gets to a it gets to a place where it's irreversible and this is why the batman is needed because he can do more in a weekend than any body in the actual um, system can do in 10 years because he doesn't he does work within the constraints of the law but he's a vigilante vigilante right so the way he his methods are extreme and he'll go where other people won't there's only a line that he won't cross and even that happens in this movie right where selena kyle's going to kill her dad Carmine Valgoni and he stops her from killing her own dad he says there's some lines once you cross them you're done so he saves her from that you know so yeah it's a really good movie man you know it's just um there's definitely gonna be a second movie which I'm excited to hear I'm excited to know that right um but I hope like the next movie there is example i mean it's not super important because this is just the beginning right but let me just say it. the batmobile it weren't there bro it was i mean it was cool when you saw it but there wasn't enough of it there was not a proper sequel to the batmobile bro i mean there was one chase scene but it was a, it was against oh, cobblepot man in a normal car you know, so I would like to have seen more, but it's fine. For the first movie, this movie is the setup, right? And I hope that there's going to be a trilogy for this movie. It needs to have a trilogy, man, because this move, I pray Matt Reeves does not lose focus. And he stays in love with this to the third movie. I hope he does, please. Because you've seen movies, the second movie and then the third movie just goes crazy. And But I believe this movie, you could see the high production value. The movie just reminded me of Matrix 1, man, in terms of just how solid the movie looked and the character of Batman, the Batman. And another thing that was really telling as well was when he was in a Batman suit, he was like a walking deity, a living deity. He was like a mech. Like, you know, like Metal Gear Rising, Raiden, when you got the final suit, he was pretty much invulnerable. Like, he was un touchable when he got the final armor not the final armor but you know Raiden got defeated in the beginning of the of the game after his defeat after he recovered from his injuries he got his proper suit early in the game and that suit was just he was a unstoppable force that's how Batman um, seen in this movie when he had the whole this was without doubt the best batman armor they've ever done free free there is no there, i don't i don't nope i don't think anyone could argue with that this is he looked so cool as batman and he he really embodied batman man like 
I'm trying to think. Have I ever, I don't think I've ever seen a Batman embrace Batman the way Robert Pattinson has. No time for this Bruce Wayne persona. I'm Batman. All in. All of the time. That's it. For that alone. I love that. And he... And I like the fact that the movie did not... It was not an origin story. Oh my god. Thank goodness, dude. I'm sick. I don't know how many Batmans I've seen. Maybe, what, four, five, six, something like that. Origin story, origin story, origin story. This movie just hit the ground running. No origin story, just telling us a story, a thriller, action, just going. Bosh. Yeah. The movie good, man. Definitely excellent movie. Would 100% recommend you go watch this movie. Um, there is no real issues I could point out about this movie other than my little nitpicks, right? And that is just me trying to find a little bit of a fault. But the movie was a masterpiece. I can't wait to own it. I wonder when it comes on HBO Max. Maybe I should have looked that up. But yeah. This movie. What God like. Um, I hope they do more with Selena Kyle. Like this one was a good one to set her up. As showing her origin story. And her development. As a character. Because she's not. This. This version of Selena. She doesn't. She doesn't bathe in the chaos as much as we know the character does, right? She's a character trying to understand the chaos, navigate it, and survive. That's what her character is trying to do in this movie, right? And understands her place and what she can do in this world, right? And I did like that about her character, actually. Like, the way they uh, they went about her character versus Batman's character. You could see the parallels, but you could also see the similarities in their, hero their heroism. How displaced they were in normality. And how they wanted to make a change. She even said to Batman. We have to stand up. Or else. who w We have to stand up. Or else who will. We have to make a stand. Right. Why like she said something like that. I can't remember. What, I think that was towards the. End. Of the movie. Or like just to pass midway because it's a long movie man you know so yeah she's like a really good character and then the riddler's character was he was a he was a worthy rival he was a worthy rival we cannot put him in the same category as joker or bane he is a different this because this is a psychological thriller action that's what this movie was because in the day, when you look at what he was doing, he's kind of like a bloody Zodiac killer like type character, right? And he's, there, there, but there was a lot of set pieces in this movie, man. Like, I'm not trying to say this movie was not epic. It did have epic. It did have a lot of fight scenes, good fight scenes. And I like Batman's fighting style in this movie. It was hella cool. It was not more, it was not as martial, like, martial art style. It was more like... MMA kind of like real life military fighting right it was like more of and self-defense 
fighting. It was like I liked the fighting. The the camera angles when he was fighting were good. They didn't use those stupid shaky cams. They were using still cameras. He was doing the choreography. You saw when the bullets were bouncing, shooting him, and they were like bouncing off of him. But then if it was like a powerful um um weapon like a shotgun or something then it would like send him flying or wind him because at the end of the day even if it is powerful armor he's still a human behind there you will still take the impact of the brunt because you're you're wearing it you know so i did like the aspect of it like the fighting so yeah the fighting was good i'm not saying anything bad about that I like the metaphors in terms of his character did evolve in the end where he says I have to be a beacon of hope for the people. It just is not going to work for me just to be in the shadows, skulking in the shadows and just taking out all the bad guys. I have to show, I have to be he has to be like All Might in my, my Hero Academia. He has to show people he's there. And what his intentions are. That's why when you saw like there was like towards the ending. Where the Riddler had showed his real plan. And like the whole thing in the end was him to kill off all the corrupt officials at the top level. And the crime people. And then just completely purge the city. So he put like bombs all over Gotham. That would go off at the weakest points of, um, no, the strongest points of the dam around Gotham and flood the whole of Gotham and just basically purge the whole city. And he was intending to have Batman with him in Arkham Asylum, but it wasn't called Arkham Asylum, it was called Arkham Hospital, which I thought was kind of strange because you saw on his, um, when they captured. The Riddler and he was in prison. He the prison clothes that he had said Arkham Hospital. So I thought that was kind of strange. Like he was in Arkham Asylum. You know, and there was like to, at the very, very end, you did see I think it was the Joker that was there that was talking with him. I think it was Joker because of the laugh, the you know <coughs> like kind of like the killing joke. Um, Joker, we had that kind of that, that the way he was laughing. So I don't know, man. Like, but I'm. Let, let's say for now, look, I just watched the movie. Let's say that was the Joker. Yeah. He was in the Arkham Hospital with the Joker. So I think maybe it's just that it's not become Arkham Asylum yet, and it's going to become Arkham Asylum because as that as what happened in. I think, was it Batman Returns? The one with the Scarecrow. And he lit off the, the toxin of his, um, hallucinate, um, his hallucinate, um, hallucinative um, drug. And that made everybody go crazy. And that's what made the people, a lot of super villains come out of nowhere in Gotham. And that's what kind of opened the Pandora's box. And in this movie, they do it with the way the dam has flooded the whole of the city. It's purged the city. Falcone gets killed off by the Penguin after they arrest Falcone. Right? So Falcone is now gone. And now Falcone acted as a seal for all of the criminals of the city. Right? Because there was no question. Falcone was at the top. He was number one. He controlled everybody. But now that he's gone, everybody's going to vie for control. And they're going to have control. Different um, sections. Like, you know, like 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 Penguin and um, Two-Face and um, I think what's it called? The, the Midnight Owls and um, what is it called? The Black Skull and all these kind of villains, they all control certain areas of Gotham, right? And they're all trying to gain complete control of Gotham, right? So that's what you're going to, hopefully, what we're going to see in the second movie. Let me not say hopefully, there will be a second movie. So that's what they're trying to via for control. 
And the next movie, I hope, is going to be that. Where you're going to see different villains, you know, trying to take over. And Batman is just, like, the more detective... But we need Matt Reeves to come back. Matt Reeves needs to be there again. He can't he can't hand it off to another director to try to do another story or take it in some some weird mad direction. That can't happen. Warner, DC have to give Matt Reeves a blank check and get him on board again. And I do want to see Robert Patterson. As Batman because he did a bloody good job and I've bought into his Batman now. So um Yeah. Love the Batman. Love what they did with him. Love the fact that he was Batman all the time. I'm happy. I'm just so happy they didn't Wonder Woman 1984 this and they didn't screw it up. They did an excellent job. I give the movie a 10 out of 10. Um, extremely happy with it. Love the ending. Um, the way Batman was at the ending, he still maintained his character. There was no character assassination. But he did evolve to say, look, I have to be a beacon to show the good that can come of this city. The worst is yet to come. But I have to give the people hope that even when it does come to that, everyone can make a difference. I will make a difference, but we all can together. And that was a bit in the ending where the city was flooded and he was helping. He helped like the boy um, who's pe the mayor got killed and then um, Bruce saw the boy's son. And um, so... Um, Bruce saw the mayor's son on his own and it reminded him, it reminded Batman of him when he was Bruce Wayne, the kid. So you could see that connection he was having whenever he looked at the son, at the boy, the son of the mayor, right? And I did like that. And the way he helped the boy out and then he helped the mayor out and he had the flair and then he was just leading everybody to safety with the flare, you know, in the dark area, filled with water, danger all around them. But they were all kind of like following him as he was leading them, you know, to safety. You know, and that was, I like that change in his character. Working alone in the shadows to coming out of the shadows to help everybody and show them he's not just a brooding figure in the shadows to be feared by everybody only the criminals batman godlike movie 100% recommend you go watch that movie and um that's the review man you know we here we've been here with batman you know we've been here we've been waiting for this movie and uh yeah, Warriors, that's it. I want to say thank you for watching. If you're still here, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. And I've got a lot more videos coming. So uh, please like, share, subscribe this video. Um, stick with me. And um, I'll keep doing this thing. All right, Warriors, take care. Stay blessed. And uh, laters.